I can't see shit. Jeremy, congratulations. A very dominant performance over Pedro Carvalho here in Dublin. How happy are you with the performance overall? I'm, I'm happy with the win, regardless. Um, I, I would have liked to get the finish, but, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of circumstances whenever you travel across the world, and uh, just to overcome those is, is a big part, and I'm just still learning in this game. And, uh, yeah, I'm just ready for the next one. Yeah, you know, it, like, it was it was a fairly comprehensive win in the end, but it sounds like maybe you're not quite overly happy with it. Or, would that be right to say? Uh, it was a bit of with my rehydration, I think. I um, Yeah, I made a little mistakes just on the rehydration and, and things behind the scenes that uh, like I was really dry, mouth was dry, and I, I wasn't sweating, but I felt exhausted in there, you know, and my, my gas tank's a lot better than that, so I know there was uh, just a little things I got to – to, to shore up moving forward. Yeah, I'd say, you know, the, the most probably adversity you had to come through was in the first round. Pedro was looking for a submission. Did, did you feel it was ever close or you felt no, in control? No, like, I mean, he had a tight squeeze right at the very beginning, but I knew he jumped for it too early. And, and I'm, I, I, like I said, I think I'm the best grappler in the division. Um, I think I, I've proven that time and time again against all these guys that I, I go with. Sanchez, they said the same thing. He's going to have submissions off my ba off his back. And I just, I knew if you're at 145, if you're a featherweight and I'm on top of you, you're going to be in trouble. And, and I'm not too worried about what you're offering from the bottom. So I, I like, he had a little bit of a squeeze, but it actually just gave me a takedown. Ultimately it was your grappling that got you to win in the end. You know, was that your game plan coming into this fight was to utilize your grappling and your jujitsu? Uh, it was more so that I wanted to really hurt him with some hands, you know, um, he's a guy that, that leaves himself open. He's a very like pressure fighter. So I thought I could sit him down with some hands, but, uh, as soon as I get got in on the hips, just like, you know, 90% of the division, as soon as I got a hold of him, I was like, you know, this is my path to, to, to victory. Coming into this fight, it was being billed as a number one contender fight. Yeah. Do you expect to be fighting for the title next? I, I believe so. You know, there's, I don't know who else there is for me to fight. You know, I've, I've, that's three, three wins in a row. You know, you know, you're, I'm starting 2023 with wins over Sanchez, Pico, and Carvalho, you know, all ranked in the top five when I beat them. And so I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. They're all dominant victories. Um, I think that's the, that's the fight to make now. So do you think they will send you to enemy territory again? I mean, they can. You know, that's the story of my career. It's, I've been all over the world. It's a cool way to see the world. Uh, you're always learning. And then you always have to overcome different things when you travel. So, I mean, in a perfect world, I get to fight, you know, California or somewhere in the States, somewhere local to Vegas. But I, I mean, I'll, I'll try to fight Pitbull and IL-8 and the Walmart. I'll fight them anywhere. I don't care. I just want that title and I want that fight. So I, we can go wherever. Yeah. And hey, there's no more AJ McKee. You kind of left the, the rest of the division behind you. So it has to be you, right? What if Pitbull is listening to this interview? What would you like to tell him? I'm coming, man. I've been on the heels. I've been on his heels the whole time. Uh, when we were actually, he was fighting Borix and I was fighting Pico. He was already talking about fighting Pico, you know, so that's left a sour taste in my mouth. And since that fight, I was like, I can't wait to earn my shot to fight him to prove because he was overlooking me back then. And he was already looking at the guy I was supposed to be fighting. He was looking at the, that was going to be his next fight, you know, and now there's talk to him going down to 35 and, He's probably calling his nutritionist right now, trying to be like, "Yo, let's get me down to 35 because I don't want any of this." And I, I'm, I, I'm ready for that fight. That's that's the fight to make. That's the only fight that's left. I've nobody else in the top five. You know, like I said, I'm I got three wins in a row against all top five guys, and there's no one else for him. He's a guy who wants to stay busy. So let's do it. We can go ASAP. I, I'm, I'll fight him in any corner of the world um, at any time frame. Extreme Couture is at an all-time high. There's happening a lot of great stuff over there. How did your camp go, and how was the energy in the gym in preparation for this Cafayo fight? Oh, this is a great camp. You know, like every camp, I get better and better and better just because I'm learning constantly, and I stay in the gym. I'm just so regimented, you know, that uh, my coaches don't let me slack off. I, I live there full-time in Vegas, so it's if I'm not training, that's my life. It's my job, so I'm always training, and if I'm not training, I feel like I'm not doing anything. So I get back in the gym and keep my diet clean. And uh, so I'll, I'm, I'll be ready to go whenever. And the gym's at an all-time high and it's showing everybody we're all winning, you know, because we're doing something right right now. Enjoy the victory, sir. Thank you, sir.
That's it. Listen, Guinness, man. My man, thank you.